Hello chess enthusiasts, my name is Micha and welcome to my Chess Realm YouTube channel. So long awaited uh, that uh, still uh, tournament has begun in Vikan Z, it's a 14 player single uh, Robin uh, tournament. So we have the top players playing there. Let's go to the second round, duel between Magnus Carlsen and Anish Giri. Let's see what happened. Magnus Carlsen had white pieces and he started with d4, knight to f6, c4, e6. Knight to uh, f3, d5, and now g3, and it already smells like Catalan defense, so yeah, bishop to e7, bishop to g2, uh, black castles kingside, and uh, white also, more or less according to the theory, and now the theory also suggests that uh, uh, black should capture this pawn on c4, uh, which is actually uh, the most popular option, and so the pawn captures on c4. Now, there are many ways to retrieve this uh, for example, queen to c2 or queen to a4 or maybe even knight to e5. Those are uh, the most popular options, but white has decided to play knight to a3, uh, getting his uh, another uh, knight into the game. Well, if knight manages to arrive at the c4, white's pieces are very well placed, so black is already uh, worse off from strategically point of view. So white is literally forcing black to capture uh, this uh, knight on a3. So bishop captures on a3. B pawn recaptures, now let's see, uh, black is still a pawn up and also uh, white's pawn structure is squandered, still white has a bishop pair and we will see who will be better able to exploit these advantages in the future. Now of course uh, black cannot simply play a b6, uh, can capture his bishop because once this knight is gone then we have this attack on uh, rook, so uh, black plays bishop to e7, preparing to deploy it on c6 and now white plays uh, a4. Not so much to protect this b5 square, but uh, to freeing his bishop uh, to go to a3. And now black plays bishop to a6, taking over uh, the long diagonal, or should I say neutralize a white light square bishop on this long diagonal. And now bishop goes to a3, attacking the rook. Rook goes to e8. And now white plays a queen to c2, trying to get this pawn on uh, c4 back. And now black responds with knight to from b goes to uh, d7. Now, of course, uh, white shouldn't simply just capture immediately because the knight goes to uh, b6 and uh, attacking uh, the queen enters the game with tempo and uh, also this pawn on a4 is double attack. So first uh, white plays uh, rook goes to uh, c8 putting some pressure on the sorry c1 putting some pressure on this c7 uh, square and now black plays uh, a6 preparing this uh, b5 pawn push well if white allows this, for example, king to h1, then after b5, white is forced to capture, and after uh, on captures, of course, bishop is under attack and cannot go here on uh, b2 because uh, pawn on a2 is still under attack, so after maybe uh, bishop to b4, then rook goes to a4, even if white uh, defends, then knight goes to uh, e5, sorry, d5, black has redeployed his pieces with a pawn up here, uh, black is much better, if not totally winning. So in the game, white finally captures this pawn on uh, c4. And now black plays uh, knight goes to b6, attacking both queen and this uh, pawn on uh, a4, who is double attack, so there's no point in defending it. So first white plays queen to c3, and now black has two ways of capturing this pawn on a4, but, but if bishop captures this pawn on a4, then uh, this uh, pawn on c7 is double attack. So black captures pawn on a4 with uh, knight and now white plays queen to b3, of course preparing uh, rook to uh, c6 and later grabbing this uh, uh, knight on a4, thus gaining uh, two light pieces and then uh, white would have uh, a bishop pair for uh, rook and would be much better. So maybe the best option here would be simply retreating knight back to b6, but black has decided to play queen to d5, protecting this bishop on c6 so that can queen later protect this uh, knight on uh, a4 but now here comes a spectacular exchange sacrifice almost clear one indeed now rook captures on c6 well of course uh, black cannot capture queen because after pawn recaptures uh, even if black recaptures rook then this pawn captures uh, a knight and again we have uh, two bishops versus rook which is winning for white so black has no other options but to recapture with the uh, queen still protecting the knight and now uh, white plays knight goes to uh, e5 attack on the queen so white gains another tempo and now uh, queen goes to uh, b5 of course uh, white shouldn't capture because black recapture solidifies his position and is already better so white plays uh, queen to c2 taking this uh, pawn on uh, c7 
Well, here black should relieve the queen from uh, guarding uh, this uh, knight on a4, maybe knight to b6 later deploying to uh, d5 would be totally solid option. Instead, however, black plays knight from f goes to uh, e5. And now white responds with uh, rook goes to b1, attacking the queen. Well, those two squares are uh, protected, so uh, if queen wants to still defend knight on a4, has no other option but to go to a5, and this is what happened in the game. And now uh, white plays bishop captures uh, knight on d5. Now there are two ways of recapturing. Still queen has to protect this knight, but anyway it would be better if black would capture uh, bishop here on uh, d5. Even if white recaptured, then black would probably uh, drive away this uh, knight on a very strong outpost. Later maybe trying to grab this defensive pawn on uh, a2. Have to keep in mind black still has a lot of... Uh, on the queen side so it's not like it's uh, a lone rook versus two pieces still in the game black captures bishop with pawn another uh, in a series of uh, inaccuracies now rook captures uh, this pawn on b7 and is already in on the seventh uh, rank well white also threatens uh, bishop to b5 if bishop uh, sorry before if bishop arrives at b4 this uh, queen is trapped well black would, should probably try with uh, maybe uh, knight to c3 even if uh, white plays bishop to b4 double attack then uh, queen captures even if uh, uh, queen then uh, recaptures still black has uh, some uh, counter action here on the queen side instead in the game black plays uh, c5 pre preventing this uh, bishop to b4 well well why cannot simply capture on c5 because then uh, Knight recaptures and we have attack on the rook and also on the bishop. And you have to keep in mind that uh, also knight on e5 is under attack. Still, this c5 pawn push literally opens this 7th uh, rank for uh, white rook. So white plays queen to uh, f5. Targeting this uh, pawn on uh, f7. There's no point in playing uh, f6 because queen goes to... Uh, d7 and it's going to be made in a couple of moves there's nothing uh, black can do about it so black plays rook goes to f8 trying to defend this still this uh, pawn is uh, three times attacked and maybe white should have tried with uh, rook to uh, f7 even if black captures then queen captures check if the king to h8 we have a queen to d5 attacking this uh, rook on b8 if black removes the rook then we have this uh, smaller Modeling made pattern, knight to f7, king to g8, knight to h6, of course if king to f8, queen to f7, checkmate. If however king goes to h8, then queen goes to g8, check, black can only capture with rook and knight to f7, checkmate. In the game however, white has decided to capture with knight. Now let's see, you might think that uh, black can try to gain a pawn with the queen to e1 check, well then king goes to g2 even if queen captures, then we have this uh, queen to d5 preparing the uh, discover attack on the king, even if black tries to provide some escape hatch, for example h5, then we have knight to g5 check, king can only go to h8 and then uh, rook goes to uh, f7. Naturally black cannot capture because then we have queen to a8 and it's going to be made in a couple of moves. Or maybe even after, I don't know, queen to d3, white would probably play uh, rook to uh, f3. Again, the rook still shouldn't capture it, uh, so I don't know. Maybe after queen to g6, then we have uh, knight to f7 uh, check. After uh, king maybe to uh, h7, rook to uh, f5, this pawn is going to be captured. Even if black returns the exchange, rook to uh, f7, then we have a rook to h5 check. After king to uh, g8 again. We need this rook and white has a decisive advantage. Okay, let's go back to our game. So in the game, black plays queen to uh, d8. Of course, offering queen, but if uh, knight captures and rook captures queen, queens are gone and black releases the pressure. So first white plays uh, d pawn captures on uh, uh, c5, of course, uh, pre prevent preparing the discover tank on the rook. So uh, black plays queen to f6, trying to exchange uh, queens, avoiding further mating threats, and uh, white agrees, so queen captures on f6, g pawn recaptures, and now knight goes to uh, h6 check. Now king goes to h8, because there aren't any other squares, and now white plays c6, preparing to uh, 
from this uh, C-Pawn, so black plays uh, rook from f goes to c8, attacking, and now uh, white plays c7. Of course, the other rook cannot help it, so uh, black plays uh, knight to c3, trying with uh, knight to b5, uh, gaining this pawn, and white responds with bishop to uh, b2. Now, of course, well, black cannot play knight to b5, because that's uh, that... Because after that is bishop to f6 checkmate. So black plays d4 defending this uh, knight on c3. And now white plays knight goes to uh, f7 checking goes to uh, g7. And now knight to e6 attacking this uh, rook. The end is near. Black plays uh, king goes to g6. But before capturing the rook, a white plays uh, king to f1 trying to protect this uh, pawn on uh, e2. And now uh, black plays... Uh, Knight goes to uh, b5, and white responds with knight captures uh, rook, uh, rook recaptures, and now uh, a4 driving this uh, knight away, uh, knight captures on uh, c7, but now bishop captures pawn on uh, d4, with two pawns down, black is lost in the game, there followed knight goes to uh, e6, and now bishop goes back to e3. Let's see what black can do, well not much, even if rook tries to uh, take this pawn, white simply plays a5, and... Uh, White is totally fine with two pawns up. This is winning for White. And in this position, Anish Giri has decided he has enough and resigned the game. So I hope you like this game. I hope you have learned something from it. More will come from the Tata Steel tournament. So subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. Of course, I invite you to visit my Instagram page. That's it for now and see you soon.